Hi. I just wanted to say that if you enjoy this audio, there will be an extended edition on my Patreon. So, if that interests you, give it a look. But if not, enjoy the audio. Good evening, my princess. Um, I, I don't mean to intrude on your bed chambers, but... <clears throat> I was assigned by your father to watch over you tonight as you slept. Well, um, he says it's because there's been quite the increase of assassination attempts, and you are quite vulnerable in your bedroom while you sleep, so he assigned me to watch over you. I, um... <clears throat> I'm sorry for the awkwardness that's sure to ensue after this situation. I don't... I would have rather not have come here at night and watch you sleep, but if I were to say no to the king, I would probably get beheaded, so I'm here not for my own will, but for your father's, so I am sorry, but I will have to watch you as you sleep. No, we can't do that either. He said I need to be in the room with you. Not, um, <clears throat> not outside, just watching your bedroom as you do have a window, and that is a spot of vulnerability. So, I, I could stand in the corner outside of your field of view so you don't see me, or I wouldn't bother you. I can also be as quiet as a church mouse, as quiet as you need me to be. As quiet as you need to be. As qu As quiet as you need me to be. I, I will do whatever you need to make this as comfortable as it can be for you. Because again, I, I'm aware this is rather awkward. And I do apologize. But your father said what he said, and I would never ignore his orders. I would never ignore your orders either, but your father's kind of trump yours, so I do need to respect his wishes a bit more than yours, seeing as you're not quite the queen yet. You still have a few years before your father picks out a prince for you to marry. So, is there anything I can do to make this less of a awkward situation for you, my princess. I, I can be as quiet as you need me to be. Whatever you wish. Except, you know, not watching you as you sleep, because I can't really not do that. I can get you some water if you need it, or a bedtime snack. Whatever you need, I will bring to you. All right, as you wish. Are you sure you're comfortable? Could I get you another blanket or a soft pillow? All right. Sorry, I, I just want to be of service to you, and I, I don't feel like I'm doing a very good job of that right now, because I know I'm creating a bit of tension, and it'll probably be hard for you to fall asleep knowing that my eyes are on you. Well, I, they won't be on you, they'll probably be on the window or, or the door. I, I promise I won't w look at you while you sleep. I, uh, I'm very sorry that that was weird. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I won't watch you while you sleep, I promise. I'll just watch over you, the area above your body. That sounded weird too. Um, I apologize. I'm not much of one for conversation. As I'm sure you're aware, the few times we've communicated, I'm... I'm... I'm 
much more adept at being the stoic, silent type. See, training ever since you were a boy to be a knight, it and left not many social skills for me to learn. Instead, I was learning how to gut a squirrel at the age of eight. So. Oh, um, yes, I, I was training ever since I was a boy to become a knight. My father was, um, quite the renowned knight, and he expected me to follow in his footsteps, so. The second I was able to hold a sword, I immediately got training. I never was sent out to play with other boys my age or socialize with the girls of my village. I was always trained to be a knight, and, well, clearly the training paid off, because here I am. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I'm aware you probably don't care for my, my backstory, and... I, I don't want to bore you. Well, um, if... If me blathering on about my past is really helping you sleep, then... Then I, I suppose I can keep talking about it. And you seem to have a bit of interest, so... Whatever my princess desires. I can remember my first training day with my father. It wasn't the first one we ever had, but it was the first one I could remember. We never used wooden sparring swords. We. He always forced me to use raw steel. I never had the pleasure of only using wooden blades to spar. And he very rarely had mercy on me. He would always force me to attack him with full force. And seeing as he was one of the best knights of the land, I could never land a blow on him. But that didn't mean he would never land blows on me. It was oftentimes I would walk home and my mother would see me covered in cuts and ask me what happened. And I never knew what to say, so I just looked at my father and... She would get upset, but never for long. She usually came to accept this was my life, and that my father would train me in the way he would. My mother was more compassionate about me than my father was, but she didn't still expect me to become a knight. So she forgave my father's more aggressive training style, because she knew it would pay off. The first day I remember, my father attached a hay bale to my back, and I had to fight him with the extra weight. And not like it didn't faze me whatsoever, but it almost doubled my body weight, and I could barely move. But my father said, "If you can't move with that much weight on your back, then how do you expect to fight in a suit of armor?" And in a way, he was right. I mean, the armor is quite heavy, but not as heavy as that hay bale. He cut me right across the face. This scar I have right here, it actually isn't from any sparring of anyone in the camp or any other night. My, my father gave it to me. In the sparring camps, we have the dignity to use wooden swords, and we never go for the face, but my father was relentless. He said, no opponent would have the dignity not to go for your face, so I shan't either. And more often than not, he'd graze my face. He was just skilled enough to draw blood, but never go too deep. I still admire my father. And I know, to most people, a childhood like that sounds barbaric or sad in ways, but it was the only time I could spend with my father before he died. 
was still missing. He wasn't the best father, but he was my father, and I still loved him. To this day, I don't know if he loved me or, or he only saw me as a student. I could never tell. My mother always said that he loved me, but I never felt that warmth. At least not that I could tell. He never told me he loved me. Perhaps the sparring sessions were his way of telling me that. Preparing me for this harsh and cruel world. I don't know. I still remember the day my father died. I was there, training with some of the younger knights. Although I was the youngest one there by quite a few years, my father always pushed me forward because I was very skilled for my age group. The attack happened so suddenly that the bells began to ring and Arrows were flying, iron clashing against iron. It was so brutal, so quickly. I had seen blood before that day, but never so much of it. Never my father's blood. Through all of my training days, I had never landed a blow on him. I thought he was invincible. And then I saw those goblins tear him apart. But I remember this too. Every night that died that day let out wails of pain, howled as they approached death. But not him. My father would never scream. He was still looking till death. I've always hoped that I could match that one day be as powerful and righteous of a knight. I don't know if I'll ever reach that. I hope to, but I don't know if I will. Those goblins tearing my father apart. It reminds me of the first time my father made me kill a goblin. He had captured one on one of his adventures, and, and he brought it home to teach me how wild and disgusting they were, to teach me of their senseless way of fighting. They don't fight with grace or dignity that most knights do now. They, the savages, swinging blades violently, with no skill attacked, but the speed is almost unmatched. He made me gut that goblin. And for a while, it, it always made me sick to my stomach. But after watching my father die, that memory never made me feel sick again. I, I, I apologize that... I, I'm very sorry that I got very dark and... <clears throat> I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to upset you, my princess. I, I'm sorry that you find my, my life sad. But. I see it is worth it. My father made a sacrifice any noble knight would be happy to make. He died for his kingdom, and I would be happy to go out the same way as him, fighting to keep my kingdom safe, the royal family, to keep you safe. Um, <clears throat> I, 
I, di I didn't mean to make this personal. I'm here to serve my kingdom, and the royal family, of course. So I have a great deal of care for all of you. Your brother, your, your mother, your father. And you, of course. I know I'm, I'm your personal knight, and, and I very rarely talk to you. It's, it's mainly because I, well, again, my, my childhood consisted of training and gutting goblins, so I didn't really know how to socialize. <laughs> but I was very happy that I was assigned to you. I mean, we are almost the same age, and you didn't know that. Yes, if anything, I, I think you're older than I am. N no, no, it, it's, it's okay. I, my duty is to this kingdom. That's what I was born for. You were born to serve your role as the princess, and I was born to die for you, or for anyone of the royal family. I do know my worth. My worth is to serve you. I... I, I don't know why... why you care so much. N not to make fun of you or, or anything. I, it's just a little confusing to me. I, I don't know why... Every other member of the royal family I've opened up to a little bit. Um, they always say, you know your place well, knight. Or something to that degree, and and I always nod my head, and we move on. I've never been afforded such compassion. Thank you. I know my life means nothing without protecting the family, protecting the kingdom. It's not about what I wanted. It's it's about what, what my father made me to be and what, what my purpose was. If my princess orders me to be honest, then I suppose I will be. I never wanted to be a knight. I wanted to be a blacksmith. I know it may sound silly, but working with metals and shaping them to be tools, weapons, it's, it's always fascinated me. In fact, the sword I carry is... was actually forged by my own hand. It's... it's not bad craftsmanship. It's actually why it's... it's the only blade that hasn't broken from overuse. I made it very sturdy. Strong metal. It's durable but light, and... it's cut through many of orc and goblin. There is a part of me that wishes I could pursue that, but... But I know my role. Not all of us have the choice. <laughs> well, it's not so bad, because I do get to look after you. There's no reason I, I like to look after you. It's it's just um you, you ordered me to tell you. Um Alright. 
My princess, um... I suppose there's something I have to confess to you. 